Hello there, I'm Boo, or Jamie, and I like drawing, maximizing my hours in all the Pokemon games to find shinies, and I like to complain about lore in World of Warcraft. Isn't this a bit hypocritical from a company like Blizzard? Hello, 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 and welcome back to a new episode on the channel. Today, we are gonna do a little continuation of our adventures as a shadow priest. And as you know, I am a big believer into the saying, you can never have too many shadow priests. And since I realized that I really have to do quite a lot of the pre-event for the war within, I thought it's probably the best if I'm just gonna level a character through it, because that way I don't feel uh, like I'm wasting too much of my time since I'm also leveling a new tune. So say hello to our newest member to join the roster, Malik. And uh, first of all, I'm very surprised that that name was free on my server, not gonna lie. But we are going to start our little Shadow Priest adventures with a big emphasis of anything Old God slash Shadow slash Void slash Shadow Priest related. And obviously we're gonna start with the big thing, the Shadow Shadow Priest Auto Hall campaign. This is what started the entire, for most of its part, community hype about Zalatath Blade of the Black Empire. Yep, that cutie girl that now everyone is fawning over. This was her. This was all we knew about her. We knew that she apparently either was a old god or something else that got imprisoned by the other old gods during the reign of the Black Empire into this blade, this dagger. And and as a shadow priest, you try to get this weapon. And for that, sexy Alonso's foul over here is going to send us to the Tirisfal Glades, which we are uh, kind of close by to. And since I really wanted to show you the animations of the headless horseman in dragon flying, we're gonna zoom over there. So far, it looks really cool and nothing, nothing to hate here. Um, but the fun part happens if I press this button. Um, yeah, that looks that looks kind of weird, doesn't it? And also, so is this just a a bug now that Undercity is always like filled with green goo, even if there is no uh, no Sylvanas induced plague in the city? I I guess so. And yeah, for a moment I uh, forgot that I am not Horde right now. <coughs> That might happen every now and then. But as a little preparation for the war within, and maybe for anyone who doesn't know, the roots of the big bad new betty bad as cool girl boss girl that we're gonna have, um, I thought I maybe take you on a little journey. While we're murdering our way through this twilight camp, we're going to find a few clues about the Blade of the Black Empire, which is mostly just your usual insanity stick when it comes to weapons that maybe you you should not let your mind get too close to because this blade has the little function of whispering to its owner and um, well if I know my World of Warcraft lore well then hello I'm trying to explain something here then you should never trust a weapon that can talk to you but um, obviously not everyone has gotten the memo by now thankfully we have a little double agent over here Shadow Lord Slaghammer and he's gonna help us infiltrate the Twilight Cult so we can get our hands on a nice old gaudy weapon that will sexily whisper to us for um, the entirety of Legion and whenever you transmog the weapon. And you know me, I love my weapons that talk to you. I just love little interactions like that. So usually I try to mock my Zalatath Blade of the Black Empire as often as possible. And thankfully we have a Holy Nova so we can take care of all these flesh spawns. May you, may you stop that, sir. Good sir. Thank you. Can I already dispel magic? Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. Although I think I can also just kill them. Yes, I can. <gasps> and I get grizzly tokens. Alrighty. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> and yeah, apart from a little bit of lore and this neat imagery, I feel like this quest is rather lackluster. It's not something incredible, but I always liked it because, well, we didn't have that much old gaudy, especially before Battle for Azeroth rolled around. And I gotta be honest, 
honest, I um, I always enjoy especially my old gods like that because let's be honest, their whole power comes from being shrouded in mystery also in every other part of fiction that isn't World of Warcraft. So I hope that the War Within and the World Soul Saga in general is not going to be too much explanatory when it comes to these things because I don't think that it's good for the topic. But um, at the end of the day, that's just me. And there is our cute girly. Apologies, I have not enabled dialogue right now so we're missing her sexy voice but as you can see she really likes to switch sides whoever is on the winning side um, and since that's currently us we can and uh, now proudly present our daggers to the sky and now let's very unceremoniously absorb the power of this old god servant and as soon as our friend over here is ready we're gonna zoom out of here and just like that we're back with a pretty cool weapon that I think we can transmog. I'm still rocking a set from the Trial of Style um, and I'm also not loading correctly. I always thought it's kind of funny for being the weapon of the Shadow Priest. Zalatath has not that many violet skins. Like obviously I didn't play a Shadow Priest during Legion, sadly. So I do not have the Mage Tower appearance, which yes, I'm very sad about to this day so let's not dwell on that but since we have our first weapon we're gonna quickly wrap up this order hall introduction which is like i said I think my least favorite one of all of them. First of all, I don't really like the auto all that much. Oh, and we also have to tell him that we want to go. <laughs> Whoopsie. And also the whole campaign practically boils down to the fact that um, you gather a few priests around you, but then at the end of the day, you still need to ask the help from your big plated brothers, the paladins, to take care of your business, which is um, that's definitely a choice. I uh, do not mind that paladins and priests are working together. After all, one came from the other. But I think it's just a weird idea, especially when you think about the fact that pretty much all the classes can take care of their own problems. And uh, I'm pretty sure Prophet Valen hasn't seen these rooms this filled with people since the end of Legion. I don't mind. I always like it when, first of all, dragons fly against the wall and also when and places are just filled with people. It's just nice to see, especially with old content. And now amongst all these other portals, we're gonna take the portal to our order hall. Like per se, I don't hate this order hall, but I think it definitely just has this problem that I often have with the priest. Much of it is based on the holy priest and the disciplined priest and the shadow priest is always a little bit forgotten in the dust because also the trend of priest sets nowadays also having a violet tint that is well a lot more shadowy that was not the case we mostly had very holy sets for the entirety of world of okra for the priest and as you know i am a shadow priest enthusiast that has never sat right with me and yeah in case you wondered what we just did we just cleansed a naru that had fallen to darkness and had become a void creature a very very powerful void creature you know we're just that cool no biggie you know no biggie you better cheer for me one thing i definitely love 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 about this order hall however is the music they barely ever miss with the music in world of warcraft so that's always appreciated and wait where is our second champion ishana that sounds like a drenai oh yeah didn't really pay attention i mean i have done this campaign two times even though i have so many priests and it's uh, it's just not that exciting and i also don't hang that often in this auto hall either but um let's appreciate it for what it is over here is obviously my favorite room which is this very neat um, cathedral with a thousand lighted candles and something that also kind of drags itself through this quest chain is that shadow priests are the um, unbeloved part of the priest order and 
don't get me wrong, I don't really mind that. I know that obviously a class like a Shadow Priest in the grand scheme of World of Warcraft cannot be regarded as something good. It's just also the lack of love within the quests, especially in an expansion like Legion where class and spec identity was so, so important that the Shadow Priest just didn't really get any love. And by the way, don't get fooled, they did not plan Zalatath, the Blade of the Black Empire, as being a big, big, bad baddie down the road. That developed, and that is fine, obviously, because that's just how you do story writing. But because of that, the Blade is also not this super insane hidden artifact like the Doomhammer, for example, for the Shaman. So just FYI, Shadow Priest is a spec that really didn't get that much love. And in case you're wondering, while I'm just running and jumping around, I'm waiting for my mission to come back so uh, I can continue because that is easily obtained experience. Alrighty and while we're waiting for our troops and training I'm gonna zoom back to Dalaran because I still have a remembered Lich King to slay for my daily and pretty much all the other dailies as well. And in case you're wondering why we're level 35 already I've been doing quite a lot of the pre-patch event because I realized that I will have to do this that because I'm gonna need a lot of this residual memories which is the currency of the pre-patch event because as you know I have been incredibly inactive for my usual behavior at least within Dragonflight but what I do like is its transmog or at least some of it and I just discovered and you guys probably already know that you can buy these items they are warband bound then and that in itself is already kind of cool but the coolest thing about that is you don't have to be level 70 to use the converter in the uh, tier place in dragonflight so it's kind of funny that you forge your tier at the bastion of tier you can just go there with a level 10 tune and turn all these items into tier sets which which is so cool and such a godsend. You can also do that with the weekly item that you get once per week per character. For example, I have gotten a pair of gloves that I could also turn into tier and these would turn into the normal appearance. The items from the vendor will turn into raid finder appearances. Obviously, it is only the current set that you will get. So you will have to look up which sets you. Oh man, I kind of forgot that these guys do way too much damage on you. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I forgot that for some reason these guys are super overpowered. And I also love that they just dismount you as soon as you get away from the seat of aspects. I don't really know why, but um, I bet the game knows why. Um, but now there are people here. Yay, people. I love people. Protect me while I tag everything. Probably at a certain level, this is just the safer option to do these events. I don't really understand why you scale so poorly with these guys, but whatever. Kind of lame how overpowered everything is. I can't do anything on my own. I just die. I mean, to be fair, I uh, I really haven't gotten any items to exchange the ones I've been wearing for quite some time now. So that probably also isn't really helping with the whole um, being a one shot to almost every ghoul in Northrend issue. But I also don't know, is, is account gear scaling even higher than before the patch? Did they change item level again? I, I really don't know. Also, this is a very annoying bug that sometimes these events just don't count for you because if they don't show up on the side then the chance is very high that you will just not get any experience or memories for it and I still haven't really figured out why I have the sneaking suspicion that people are just camping this one event in Northrend could that could that be correct I mean to be fair almost all of the other ones uh, pretty much suck so maybe they have this figured out but also where are the people I don't think I can uh, I can take it up with Lord Jaraxxus on my own. Yeah, we all couldn't take it up with Lord Jaraxxus. Um, what's going on? I know that I have the dagger on my back in the starting screen of the warband. 
which already looks kind of funky, but I did not know that this was also happen in game. But uh, again, just like with our warlock, dual wielding shadow priest when, because I kind of dig it, even though it looks so stupid, because the weapons of the blood elves are so ginormous. Perfect game. Nothing, nothing ever wrong with it. Why, why are you complaining, huh? It's not like you're paying for, oh, wait. Man, I always used to be a big believer into the Halo talent, but I just saw Divine Star has a 15 second cooldown and is an instant cast. And also, it looks so cool. Man, I guess I'm now also a Divine Star baby. And now for the second part of our little Zalatath adventures. Let's patiently wait for all these uh, cool guys and gals to finish their talks. Let's fawn over the ever disappearing Jaina Proudmo over here. So we can get to Kultiras. Well, that's not good, guys. Let's go, girly. <laughs> Boralus. Honestly, I think I've said this before because I tend to repeat myself. But uh, I think this is my favorite alliance capital city. But also, contrary to popular belief, I love Battle for Azeroth. Battle for Azeroth is definitely in my top three of favorite expansions. I mean, to be fair, 50% of my love for BFA probably just comes from its music because in my opinion, BFA definitely has the most banging soundtrack of all the expansions. I don't think there is a single tune I don't like. And also, Battle for Azeroth brought old gods back. And even though the end of Nazoth was uh, very, very, very lackluster and obviously a very lazy writing decision to quickly tie ends up so we can jump into the amazing Shadowlands experience, I think apart from that, Battle for Azeroth kinda rocked it out of the park. But hey. That is my opinion, obviously. I know that people who watch my videos and are not quite fond of them keep forgetting that fact that uh, people have different opinions. I know, I know. Slander. <laughs> well, let's sit down and once again, let the big guys have their important talks. While this Kulteran druid behind me is shape-shifting in and out of forms. No, you know what? I cannot shut up about this. Honestly, I need to know, how is Catherine Proudmore a good guy in any of the stories? How are we supposed that Jaina is just forgiving her for the fact that she just cast her out and left her to die? I know, I know, later she's like, oh no, what have I done? My daughter, I have lost already so many people. I mean, she says that after Gen kindly reminded her that maybe she should not turn away her only child that is still alive. But but, uh, you know, there are just things that you cannot really forgive. And I think sending your daughter after she arrives at your doorstep and begs for your help. I think I think that is one of those things that is very hard to just forgive. But um, maybe that's just me. Maybe just... Just, 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 just me. But just so you know, this, this is not a Catherine Proudmore stan YouTube account. I fully hate that woman. And now I think we're almost ready to be able to get the Zalatath quest, which is a little bit hidden, just like everything around Zalatath is, or was at least. But I'm pretty sure that before I can get that quest, wait, he's gonna give me the fairy pass, right? Yeah. What we have to do, I think, is um, use our little horsey and zoom over here to the Earthen Guardian. And he's gonna send us to Magni because um, I'm pretty sure that we still need the Heart of Azeroth to get world quests, which is what we need to get our Zalatath quest. Let's seal these fissures and let's do a really cool move in the middle of this platform. And for um, screenshot purposes, I will... Um, wait, where do I have to do that? Oh, I haven't sealed all the... Sir. <laughs> I haven't sealed all the fissures yet. <clears throat> For uh, thumbnail and screenshot purposes, I will do this outside of my uh, shadow form. Oh boy, that looks so cool. Oh, and also, yeah, I need to uh, I need to re-equip my old neck. Wait, my Heart of Azeroth is 284? Well, in that case, I think I'll leave it on. <laughs> Uniting Kulteras. There we go. Level up. And uh, you know what? Let's just send the fleet so we also have Najatar. Open. Ah, oh god. Oh, god. oh my. Oh, no. Oh, 
Wait, am I stuck? Uh, yeah, kinda. But uh, we fixed it. Set sail. Oh my god. The Thanos, I miss you. Come back. Keep on them. We cannot let them escape. But what if we do? Honestly, this is, I think, one of my absolute favorite zones in this game. I really hope that The War Within will have something like this that will just uh, get me excited about WoW again, the way that the Najata patched it. I'm just gonna quickly do the introduction. Oh, okay. Are these guys on my level? No, they're not. Then why are they not all one shots? Is this my good friend the scaling again? I, I, I fear it is. We can skill our first idol. And whenever we will do our little Najata episode, just, just pretend that we did these quests then and not now. They mostly just consist of us killing Naga, then finding allies, and then obviously, even though Ajara did not permit us to teleport away, still create a portal because we have the Heart of Azeroth and obviously we need a portal out of the questing zone. I remember this girly was so annoying to do with a new tune fresh in the Battle for Azeroth experience. And obviously because this is Blizzard, you had to quest everything Thing with everyone and uh, I, I died to her quite a few times especially with the weaker classes. <laughs> My girl Jaina Proudmore, the daughter of the sea, just said that she's already tiring of this place. What do you mean girly? We're literally on the floor of the sea. How, how can you... what? This should be your aesthetic. And I think my gang has not realized that they should uh, become a, uh, a quest giver here. Maybe because I zoomed too fast into Mesamere. Mesamere? Mesamere? I don't know. Let's ride. Land, please. We're not flying. Now they should do it, right? Haha! <laughs> Hello, second Jaina Proudmore. And just like that, we're back from the place that we could not escape. All right. And now what we need is an elite world quest. Uh, I really gotta say I'm not a big fan of these new icons I for some reason I don't really know what we had instead before this little ugly star but for some reason I just vibe more with them aha this one we need we need the naga attack alrighty and now all we need to do is kill a few of these enemies and hope that we get lucky oh these guys are oh these guys are on my level oh oh okay um yeah let's uh, let's take this a little bit more more serious then I guess oh bucker and now that I just killed this giant I think we can only get that item from the Naga themselves but uh, let's find that out the hard way I guess oh yeah just bring everyone yeah bring bring all your friends yes 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 I love that Oh my lord, why are they on my level? Oh my god, why are you kicking me around? Oh my god, so many questions. I have so many questions. I need to get out of his range. Stressed out caster noises. Can you stop freezing me with your torrent over there, lady? Oh my god. And can you guys stop kicking me around? Oh my god. Aha. But we got what we came here for. We got the Ajaran medallion. On the Naga's body, you find an ornament mental disc. The writing on its surface resembles elven script, but you cannot decipher it. You suspect the words are written in the Naja tongue. Perhaps someone with knowledge of Naga artifacts could translate the text. So we're gonna bring this to one of our Totolan friends. Ah, uh, they made BFA a level 30 to 60 questing zone. I see. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Hello, Kojo. We have a medallion. A medallion, you say? Well, let's have a look at it. I don't have all day, you know. Orders from Ajara. This medallion is inscribed with orders commanding the Naga to invade our shores and seize artifacts of power. I've heard tales of a priest who used a horrifying dagger to fight the Burning Legion. It's said this blade Zalatath whispers secrets in the deep. It might be our best chance to uncover what the Naga seek. I'm told the Naga have an altar on an island in Stormsong Valley. If you take Zalatath there, the dagger might reveal crucial information. Ominous whispering dagger. Hello, cutie. I hope Hope you missed me. You feel a familiar sensation as Zalatath reaches out to your mind. A beguiling blank of dread and delight. The whispers are faint but growing louder as you hold the blade in your hand. So weak need blood souls. The voice trails off but you can still sense the dagger urging you on. This is a familiar sensation. Alrighty, let's start doing stuff for her. And also I love that now these guys are on level 50. Alright, 
we said girly. Ah, much better. How cruel of you to leave me in such a state. But we can reminisce it later. No doubt you have many questions. As you know, I can offer countless answers. That is true. And now she sends us on a little goose chase. And while Zalatath tells us that she is loving the fact that we're spending some more time together because we have always been her favorite, we gonna use our dragon flying and my never tiring finger to click away all these popping up rare windows and zoom over to Drustvar to gather the first of a few artifacts and lives that we need to gather to um, stop, obviously, the bringing of Nyazoth and uh, we're definitely not once again doing the bidding of the wrong side. No, 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 no. That would never happen to us. Hello, guys. I got such bad news. Um, I need your void stone. <laughs> and thank you for the level up and empower Zalatath. And just like that, Girly Pop has found her body. This is the first time we can actually see Zalatath. I mean, obviously, this is not even close to her final form because um, I'm still not really sure if they have already explained to us who and what Zalatath is, but um, I hope not. And of course, she is a sexy elf because what else would she be? And just like already mentioned, like an absolute idiot <laughs> we're going to follow her bidding and get all these artifacts together completely ignoring the fact that all of this sounds an awful lot like we are preparing a ritual instead of uh, stopping something but um we are the hero of the story we couldn't ever be possibly wrong about something like that right and uh, now we're gonna get the last oh hey guys don't <laughs> Don't attack my tentacle. <laughs> a little thing that you can do, by the way, if you, like me, have to go to Voltoon now as an alliance player and obviously vice versa as a hard player, you can start the campaign. And here you can just pick one of the ports and as soon as you pick one of them, you will be stuck on this quest for sure. But what that also means is that you will now forever have at least one port that you can always voyage to, even if you do not quest any further. So for now, I will just live with the fact that we only have Voldoon but uh, since that is exactly where we want to be for our quest we will we will, we will just ignore that and um, we'll also ignore Wormbane over there and we'll just zoom to Tuatana who is hiding in a cave with a very powerful artifact which we will yoink from her cute little head to give it to our dagger because like I said earlier you should always do what questionable items of very very questionable allegiances tell you to do especially in world of warcraft you know if it sounds like old gods and it looks like old gods um maybe maybe sometimes maybe sometimes it is old gods you know <laughs> man the best plot armor in wow is still just our character being absolutely dumb isn't it Alrighty, cutie should 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 i just place these items here a stone to call forth the darkness a weapon forged in the depths a crown for the ruler of all worlds that sounds like good stuff you know hear me god of the deep i have brought you the opener the bringer of truths the torch that lights the way honor our book free me to find my own fate Go. But the blade must remain to serve my will. A fair exchange. Shadows guide you, my dear friend. We will meet again. I am certain of it. I have dreamed your destiny, mortal. The hour is close at hand.
yeah, that cinematic was definitely meant to look like that. <laughs> but um, yes, this is uh, this is what uh, continued Zalatath's storyline that started in Legion and kind of ended in Legion because just like all the other artifact weapons, we used her to drain the power of the wound caused by the Sword of Segeras. And uh, this was a neat little secret hidden quest chain that basically just introduced the little raid that is over there where we just went in to do our little ritual and obviously to also set up Nia Lothar and give us the little Chekhov's gun that is the dagger. And don't get me wrong, I think it's cool that they use a character that has been used before in World of Warcraft unlike, <laughs> unlike the Jailer who has simply never been here before. I just wish that maybe they would have done more with Salata throughout the expansions because this is everything there is of her before the War Within. And now with not only a dagger on our back and our side but also a crown on our head that was kindly screwed into the back of our head but um, never mind that one. I'm gonna end today's episode right here and now. I hope you had fun throughout our little journey to look at the two quests <laughs> that were in World of Warcraft before the War Within started about Zalatath. And I also hope that you enjoyed seeing how we got this little secret club crown. I think it's by now a very popular thing from BFA that they gave us this crown that only you and other people who have the crown can see. And that also whispers to you every single time you log in, log out or take portal in the BFA world. Very funny. And it kind of ruins a lot of transmog. But since it only shows up in BFA nowadays, that's not that bad anymore. They never never did anything else with this. Everyone expected that there would be some interaction with Nyazoth in the final fight or anything else, but um, there isn't. There are a few NPCs that react to the crown or have the crown on as well, but that is it. I am one of the people that is definitely hoping that maybe finally in the war within it will pay off that some of my characters are still wearing the stupid crown. Obviously, I will leave it on with Malik. I mean, we are a shadow priest after all. But with all of that being said, I thank you so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like or a comment. It helps and I appreciate it so much. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider doing that as well. And I hope to see you in the next episode. And until then, bye bye.